lose him. Well, we'd like to know, really, since he's still in a critical condition in that he's still being operated on, we'd like to very much to know if his chances are improved now. Uh, it's a terribly uh, shocking blow for us. He was a man we can only consider to be in the midst of life. You know, he's there around us all the time. We see him and we know him and we talk to him. We feel his presence. He has a kind of magic presence, and that's partly why this kind of circumstance could have occurred. People were attracted to him. He kind of magical presence about him, a kind of sweetness and light that uh, emerged from his character in all its shyness. And he had this kind of glow about him, which made him tremendously appealing as a person. Around four in the morning, Julia Warhola arrived at the hospital, looking drawn and grief-stricken then returned to the Lexington Avenue townhouse, where she spent long hours praying for her youngest son, imploring God to spare his life and let him marry Viva. You worked with Andy quite a lot. Uh, did you know this girl? Yes, I met her once or twice. How would you describe her? Um, uh, mixed up. How do you feel now? Um, not very well. Four hours after the shooting, Valerie Solana surrendered herself to a traffic policeman near Times Square, handing over her guns and saying simply, he had too much control over my life. For days, Warhol lingered on the borderline of life and death, passing in and out of consciousness, uncertain most of the time what was going on around him. He was in a deep delirium two days after the shooting, when the television in his room brought bewildering news of Robert Kennedy's assassination in the kitchen of a Los Angeles luxury hotel. It was also strange to me, he later recalled, this background of another shooting and a funeral. I couldn't distinguish between life and death yet anyway. And here was a person being buried on the television right in front of me. I wasn't sure if I was back. I felt dead. I kept thinking, I'm really dead. This is what's like to be dead. You think you're alive, but you're dead. I just think I'm lying here in a hospital. Finally, on July 28, 1968, after nearly two months in the hospital, Warhol returned home, but even then remained housebound for weeks. In an eerie replay of his childhood, he spent hours sitting in bed, flipping through magazines, watching television, and talking on the phone. His scarred and shattered body, he told friends, looked like a Dior dress. But it's not that bad, he assured them. The scars look pretty in a funny way. It's just that they're a reminder that I'm still sick, and I don't know if I'll ever be well again. I came to see that the event in Andy's life, apart from his discovery of who he was as an artist, which was very powerful when he hit it. The event was Valerie Solanas' attempt to murder him. The narrative was the rise to success. At the peak of that success, the breaking into it of horror, of, of someone who was crazy enough to wish him dead and then uh, the rest of his life, in some ways, facing down what he met that day. He had been told that while on the surgical table, his life functions had stopped briefly, and then they had been revived. He believed that he had died, and he had a fantasy, a theory, a belief about himself, which was that, as it were, at that moment, God decided to give him a second chance. He had died, but he took it back. And there was a deal that he could keep going for a while longer, but the deal could be rescinded at any time. And I think that he spent the rest of his life in some ways dealing with that fact. On September 4th, Warhol appeared for the first time again in public at a party celebrating the completion of Midnight Cowboy, the John Schlesinger film that included in its climactic scene many regulars of the factory. Warhol spoke that evening with unusual candor to a reporter from the Village Voice. Before I was shot, 
I always believed I was watching TV instead of living life. Right when I was being shot, I knew I was watching television. Since I was shot, everything is such a dream to me. I don't know whether or not I'm really alive, whether I died. It's sad. Life is a dream. I wasn't afraid before. And having died once, I shouldn't feel fear. But I'm afraid. I don't understand why. I'm afraid of God alone, and I wasn't before. 